Assalamu alaikum, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for logging in to today's lecture uh, 3.2. We are continuing talking about organelles. Just to remind you that in chapter 3, we said we are going to zoom into the cell world and dive deep inside the cell and, in, and learn more about the nucleus, the mitochondria, the Golgi body, the endoplasmic reticulum, the plasma membrane, the lysosomes, the vacuoles, the vesicles, the mitochondria, so and ribosomes. So we're basically diving inside the cell and we're going to introduce you to each organelle in detail. Now, if you do remember, in 3.1, we started talking about the endoplasmic reticulum, and we spoke about the nucleus and the different components inside the nucleus, the nucleolus, the chromatin, the nuclear envelope. And then we went outside the nucleus and met the endoplasmic reticulum. And if you remember, we said we have two types of ER, the smooth and the rough ER, depending on the presence and absence of ribosomes. And then we spoke about the ribosomes itself in details, and we learned about what it constituents uh, and where is it made. And we said that we have free and bound ribosomes. The free ribosomes that are swimming freely in the cytoplasm and the bound ribosomes that are attached to the surface of the ER or the surface of the nuclear envelope. We also introduced you very briefly about the Golgi body, vacuoles, vesicles, um, plasma membrane, uh, and we said all of these are part of what we call the endomembrane system. So in today's lecture, we're going to continue introducing you to the different parts or the different components of the cell. And remember, we used a new word last time, and we said it's called compartmentalization. It's a bit of a long word, but you just need to say it three times. Compartmentalization. Uh, it comes from the word compartment, all right, which means a small place or confined, closed place. So the cell is made up of compartments. Uh, you have the nucleus, you have the uh, uh, Golgi body. These are all different compartments within the cell that separates the organelles from the cytoplasm. So they can do their specific jobs. So compartmentalization. We're going to talk about the different compartments of the cell. We're going to continue for the next 45 hours or uh, 45 minutes. Sorry, not hours. Don't, don't panic. 45 minutes to talk about the different organelles uh, inside the cell. So what, are, what do we want to achieve by the end of today's lecture? We want to describe the structure and the function of organelles of the endomembrane system. We already started talking about it last lecture. We spoke about the, uh, the nucleus and the ER. Today, we're going to talk about the Golgi apparatus, the lysosomes, and vacuoles. So we're going to continue the different components of the endomembrane system. endomembrane system. We're going to recognize the similarities between the mitochondria and the chloroplasts. What are the things that make them similar? And we're also going to describe the structure and function of the mitochondria and chloroplasts. So these are the topics that we're going to cover together in the next 45 minutes, inshallah. The Golgi apparatus was discovered uh, by Camilla Gol uh, Golgi in 1883, very, very long time ago, in the nerve cells. And that's why it was called the Golgi body, because it was named after the scientist who discovered it. The Golgi complex, or also called the Golgi body, is found in all the eukaryotic cells. And we're going to see why we actually need it in all eukaryotic cells. What is the importance of the Golgi body? But before we understand the function, we need to always learn the structure. We always learn the structure of things in order to better understand the function. So what is the Golgi apparatus? It is an organelle of unconnected rows of membranous sacs called cisterni. Uh, if you want to imagine it, just imagine it like a bag of pita bread. تخيل الجولجي وادي كأنه كيسة خبز لبناني أو خبز عربي والحين لما أراويكم الصورة في الشريحة اللي بعدها بتثبت عندكم المعلومة Again back to English The organelle, uh, the Golgi body is an organelle of unconnected rows of membranous sacs I just wanted you to imagine this, that's why I gave you an example in Arabic It looks like a pita bread, so it looks like breads on top of each other like this طحظكم أحد ما يعرف يرسم There we go all right, so that is so it's a unconnected. They are not connected. غير متلاصقين. Rows of membranous sacs. So here it's empty inside. Yeah, it's empty from here. We call them cisterni. 
and they are abundant there's so much they're plenty and extensive especially in specialized cells that are specialized in secretion like for example in the pancreas we have so many of the golgi body in the pancreas okay and it's what what is a golgi body that's the structure type what's the function it is used for manufacturing warehousing so storing storing sorting so to get things organized to sort things out modifying which means changing and shipping products to the ER and I'll describe each one of these in the next slides all right so in the Golgi body we have vesicles and these vesicles transport the modified product so for example I'll make a drawing here with purple you have something that goes in okay so it will go in here it will go here it's going to do some changes to this product the purple product it's going to change it and then it's going to come out okay like this modified and then it's going to go back to the next bag the bag of enzymes here is going to make changes to it and then it's going to come out like this all right and then you're going to have and then it's going to go back again to the next one to the next bag you can have changes and changes and changes and then it's going to come out in a different form and then it's going to go back again to the next and it comes out as a different product so as you can see here what came in the Golgi body is modified when it comes out why because so many things happen as it goes from one cystony to another they go through modifications and tagging okay and they come out in the form of vesicles okay and that's what it's saying here the vesicles are transported modified products this is much better you guys are lucky that there's a very nice picture here you don't have to depend on my drawing all right let's go back and talk a little bit more using this figure because I really like it so just to remind you the endomembrane system the endomembrane system let's always start from the inside to the outside okay endomembrane system nucleus ER in the plasma reticulum vesicles Golgi body vacuoles lysosome plasma membrane all of these things I mentioned now together together is called the endomembrane system we already covered in the last lecture we spoke about the nucleus we spoke about the ER and in today's lecture we're going to talk about the transport vesicles the Golgi body uh, vacuoles and lysosomes and then in the next lecture inshallah we're going to talk about uh, the plasma membrane okay now let's just erase all of this أنا أحب أشخبط لأنه أنا من النوع اللي أحب أتفاعل جدا مع الطلاب والحين مقهورة أنه ما أقدر أشرح وأنا أمامكم so I'm just going to scribble everything here okay I hope that helps all right <coughs> okay so let's go back to the to the Golgi body which is this part over here as I said it's described as a um, unconnected uh, group of sacs we call them cisterni and you can see that they're not connected each sac is separated from the other they are not connected with each other they are separate sacs and that's very important you know why why are they not connected do you know why they're not connected because each sac has a different job has a different set of enzymes if they're all connected then all the enzymes will be mixed together but actually every sac has a different job this does job number one this does job number two this does job number three job number four job number five so each sac has a separate set of enzymes and chemicals so that can do a different kind of modification and look at this for example look at this one over here this vacuole goes inside you can see here it's binding to the first sac it binds to sac number one and the enzymes here in sac number one you see a modification then it goes to the next one and then it comes out in a different form it comes out as a vacuole 
All right, or it continues its path and it comes out as a lysosome. So yeah, Tim, we're not talking about what we need. We need the changes that we need. Every thing has different changes. Okay, the Okay, so everyone has a different job. So it depends. Do you want to make a lysosome? Do you want to make a glycoprotein? Do you want to make a vacuole? So every sac in the Golgi body has a different specialization. متخصص في شيء معين. Let's talk about this a little bit more detail. What are the functions of the Golgi apparatus? We said to modify products from the ER. So you have things coming out of the ER, the ER, and they go in the Golgi body. So they kind of modification. يعني أنتوا تخيلوها كأنها محل ما تنظيف سيارات أو صيانة سيارات. سيارة تدخل وتريد يكون فيها توائر أكبر. يكون ملمع من داخل الجلد. يكون حاطين فيها معطر. يصبغوها لون ثاني فلما يطلع من الجراج يطلع بتغييرات في السيارة هذه صح؟ Okay it's the same thing so basically you imagine it as a car going to a car wash or a car service place and it's getting all these different services in every level it comes a different service washing, painting, making the tires larger, polishing the leather inside and then it comes out as a modified car at the end this is the same idea Okay, so you have a product that leaves the ER, it goes in the Golgi body, has some modifications, and comes out uh, upgraded. <coughs> so modifications of the product. An example here is oligosaccharides portion of the glycoproteins. And then she is no glycoproteins. We spoke about it in the previous lecture. If you're still not sure what that is, please Google it. The glycoproteins are found on the outer layer of the plasma membrane. And uh, these are actually modified, the oligosaccharides portion of the glycoprotein uh, are modified in the Golgi body. Is any oligosaccharide? Do you know this word? I hope you know it. You know what saccharide is? Because we finished chapter two about carbohydrates, yeah? Saccharide comes from sugars. Sukkariyat. Saccharide, sukkariyat. Sugars, okay? And oligo is a number between three and ten. So oligosaccharides are sugars with three to ten uh, monomers. Okay, I'm gonna suck a right on them. Like manufacturing, that's the first job. All right. Second job or second function is manufacturing of some macromolecules. So the Golgi body actually itself is a place that manufactures yusunna. It makes manufacture. Okay, like what? It synthesizes pectins and other non-cellulose polysaccharides. So it's actually a place that synthesizes and manufactures some sorts or some types of polysaccharides. Like what? Like pectins. Okay, that's the second function. Now let's see how it happens. How does it deal with a product from the ER? So what happens is the chemicals in the vesicles from the ER will bind to the cis side of the Golgi body. And if you remember, we have, this is a Golgi body. أنا ورسمتي التعيسة. Oh my God, it's getting worse. الله يعينكم. طيب ما مشكلة. So this part over here, this side of the Golgi body is called the cis side. So this is the cis side. It's a side that receives the products. And this side over here, this side, الجانب الآخر, we call it trans. Trans side. يعني عنده وجهين. It has two sides. The Golgi body. It has a cis side that receives the product and it has a trans side. Is it right somewhere here? We'll see. There we go. Trans side, okay, which is the other side of the Golgi body. So, what happens? Here comes a, a product from the ER. In the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum, product. This product now will go and bind to the cis side. Of the Golgi apparatus, it's going to go inside, modify, 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 and come out from the trans side, modified. I think it's clear, but we'll re we'll read it together. Okay. So the chemicals uh, and the vesicles um, in the vesicles that are coming out of the ER are going to bind to the cis side of the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi body. But then, next. It's the pro uh, processed materials are going to move from one cisterny to another. So this is called a cisterny, 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 cisterny. So the product, this product is going to go through one cisterny to another, one cisterny to another, one cisterny to another. 
Okay, why? Because each cisterny has its own set of enzymes. كل واحد يسوي شغلة. كل منطقة كل cisterny في Golgi Wadi يسوي شغلة. ما له دعوة بالثاني. مكملين بعضهم. Okay, so what's the Golgi Wadi going to do, يا جماعة? What's going to happen? The Golgi Wadi is going to sit there. It's going to put tags. بيحط مثل العالم كذا على الأرض. It's going to sort. It's going to put them in different places. Ah, you're going to go to the plasma membrane. You're going to go to the nucleus. You're going to go to the cytoplasm. Sorting, تنظيم. And it's going to pack also material into small transport vesicles, and it's going to bud off from the trans side. So after it does all this modification, the uh, product is going to come out from this side. Opa. There we go. The product is going to come from the other side at خلاص صار upgrade. Tagged and sorted and modified by the enzymes. Okay, it's going to come out in the form of vesicles. All right, tagging vesicles. So it's going to distinguish each vesicle with a molecular marker. Now, this vesicle that comes out is going to have a tag. All right, it's going to have a tag. Sorry, I said ahmar. Okay, it's going to have a tag. هذا على أساس عالم يا جماعة. <تصفيق> okay. Okay. Another vesicle will come out with a different flag. يقول أنت بتروح cytoplasm. Another vesicle will come out with a different flag. يقول أنت بتروح plasma membrane. And then another vesicle. Each one with a different flag. Okay. Molecular markers. Why do we need these flags? Why do we need these molecular markers? Because they're going to tell them where to go and what where to go and what to do. هذا الفلاج بيقول للأخر الأخضر بيقول أنت تروح بلازما ممبرين. The blue flag, for example, will say or marker will say you're going to go to the nucleus. The yellow marker means go to the I don't know. You're going to become a lysosome. So these markers are important because they're going to tell the vesicles what they are going to be and where they're going to go. Okay, that was the Golgi body. I hope it was clear. Again, I highly recommend, ladies and gentlemen, that you go onto YouTube and you sh watch a very short video, one minute, two minutes, just write Golgi body. Okay, and watch a video. Trust me, that is the best way you can learn, especially with distance learning, where our, our communication is limited. Normally, I have uh, things with me in the class, and I jump around in class, and I show things. Uh, I can't do that now. So I really, really hope that you can go onto YouTube and just say Golgi Body short clip. Wallahi, two minutes. دقيقتين, لكن تفهموا كل شيء في دقيقتين. So please, please, please use YouTube and use Google and ask Siri. Okay, now let's talk about lysosomes, which is a second, which is also part of what we called the endomembrane system. إيش يعني lysosome? Lysosome, lice, lysosome comes from the word lice, to lice, and to lice is to break down. When we call hydrolysis, okay, it's to hydrolyze, lice is to break, and hydra comes from the word hydrology, which means water, المياه. So hydrolysis is to break something using water. Remember we spoke about hydrolysis when we spoke, to, when we spoke about polymers, making and breaking polymers using water. فحاولوا تتعلموا هذه المشتقات الكلمات على اساس يساعدكم على الفهم. Okay? So lysosomes are small bodies that actually break down things. Why do we need small bodies in our cells that break down things? ليش نريد شيء اللي اللي it breaks down things. Okay? Uh, let's remember that our body is continuously attacked by things that we don't want inside the body. We don't want bacteria, we don't want viruses, we don't want microbes. We don't want damaged cells. Um, so and, and damaged organelles. So when we have these kind of things in our body, the lysosome comes and says, "Don't worry, I'm going to break it down for you." Lysosome. It's literally a bag full of enzymes, and it breaks down material. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. These lysosomes are not found in plant cells. Uh, if you're curious and you want to know why, uh, I'm, I'm really happy with a lot of students when I asked the question uh, in 2.8 about the ribosomes. A lot of students actually came back to me and sent me an email giving me the answers, which I'm very happy with because it means you're curious and you want to know. Even if you didn't answer me, I mean, even if you didn't email me, that's fine. 
But I would like you to stay curious and say, why? Keep on asking yourself why. Scientists always ask the question, why, 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 why? If you don't ask why, that means you might be dead. <laughs> dead at least in the sense of brain-wide, okay? Don't let the curiosity uh, die in your mind. Always ask the question why. So why are lysosomes not found in plant cells? Find out. Like, membranous uh, lysosomes are membranous bound sacs of hydrolytic enzymes. So literally they are a bag full of hydrolytic enzymes, enzymes that break down things. Uh, the cell uses lysosomal enzymes called hydrolase. Anything that ends with A's is an enzyme. Okay? So hydrolase is the enzymes that hydrolyze or break down things. They use to digest macromolecules. Hydrolytic enzymes work in acidic conditions with a pH of 5 uh, by pumping hydrogen ions from the cytosol. So they pump in hydrogen from the cytosol inside the lysosome, and then they become very acidic, and that acidity helps break down material. So that bag of enzymes, okay, called lysosomes, are actually highly acidic. Right? The lysosomes create a space where the cell can digest macromolecules safely. All right? So you have this, it's compartmentalized. So if you have something that you want to break down, that thing that needs to break down goes inside the lysosome, inside here, and then the enzymes inside the lysosome الإنزيمات اللي موجودة داخلها بتبدأ تحطم هذا الشيء اللي إحنا ما نريده. So هذا هذا الشيء X إحنا ما نريده في الجسم. بيدخل داخل اللايسوزوم وداخل هذا اللايسوزوم في إنزيمات حارقة، أوكي؟ okay. اللي يتكسر لك الشيء الما الما مرغوب فيه أو شيء اللي يحتاج تحطيم. سواء كان شيء ما مرغوب أو شيء كبير يحتاج إلى يعني يكون أصغر حجمه. So it will hydrolyze. طيب I have a question now. Is there a problem with leakage? of a lysosomal enzyme into the cytosol? Is it a problem if our lysosomes actually start leaking? We said the lysosomes here, you can see these, they're closed, it's a circle, right? These are the lysosomes. Are lysosomes are they are bags full of enzymes that break down things. My question is, either if there is a leakage, if the lysosomes start leaking the enzymes, is that a problem? I can almost hear you say, of course it's a problem. If you have a leak and the enzymes are going out, it's a problem because now you're going to start breaking things, even that things that you don't want to destroy are going to start getting destroyed. It depends. If the leakage is small, small amount only, or just one or two or three lysosomes, it's okay. It's neutralized by the cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm will neutralize that acidity. But if you have a large number of lysosomes starting to leak and leak and leak, of course that is an issue. Because now the cell is going to start eating itself and breaking itself. So the answer is, if the leakage is small, if you have only one or two lysosomes that are breaking and leaking, it's fine. The cytoplasm can take care of it. But if you have a large number of lysosomes leaking, then yes, that is a problem. Right. Talking again about the functions of lysosomes with a little bit more detail. But before that, let me refresh your memory. Here we have the plasma membrane on the outside. And here we have the endoplasmic reticulum. Have a rough endoplasmic reticulum. This one is a rough one. Why is it rough? You can see here all the ribosomes attached. All these orange dots here, or red dots, are the ribosomes. So that is a rough endoplasmic reticulum. What about this part here? Are they rough or smooth? This is a smooth, smooth endoplasmic Reticulum. Why, why did we call it smooth? Smooth manatanam. Safi nam. Okay? So this is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum because it does not have ribosomes. No ribosomes. So no ribosomes here. We call it smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Here we have lots of ribosomes. We call it rough endoplasmic reticulum. So what happens here? Here comes out the transport vesicle. Okay, ta -da -da, it's coming out, out of the plasma membrane, it says, oh, sorry, out of the ER, and it says, mm, I want to become a food vacuole. So this transport vesicle here wants to become a food vacuole. طبعاً الأشياء اللي تطلع من ER ممكن تتحول لأشياء مختلفة. من اللي حدد هذا الشيخ؟ شيخ جولجي بادي. جولجي أبرايتس. So the transport vesicle is going to go inside. 
if you remember what's this side called احنا قلنا الجولجي بودي عنده وجهين عنده استقبال جهه الاستقبال هو جهه انه يودع so this one over here the transport vesicle is going to bind to the cis side of the golgi body it's going to go inside this is a cisterni this is a cisterni this is a cisterni they are not connected to each other كانه كيس ما خبز لبناني every cisterni has its own set of enzymes doing a different job so the transport vesicle goes inside modified 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 and leaves from the other side that we call trans side trans okay so here we have the cis جهة الاستقبال وهير we have the trans جهة الودعة okay then comes out the transport vesicle so the transport vesicle goes inside and then comes out in the form of lysosome Okay, so it will turn into lysosome because of the enzymes that are present in the Golgi apparatus. Now, what are the functions? What I have already told you that we are going to go back to the Golgi body. We are going to go back to the Golgi body on the lysosomes. What are the functions of the lysosomes? And I keep on saying lysosomes. What are the functions of lysosomes? What are the functions? One, the first function, phagocytosis. Bye, Dalih. Bye, Dalih. One, phagocytosis. Say it with me. Phagocytosis. Again, phagocytosis. Well done. So phagocytosis is the first job of lysosomes. And what is phagocytosis? I will show you in the details, but let's learn the details. The second thing is autophagy. The second job is autophagy. I want you to say the word autophagy. One more time, autophagy. Well done. It's very important that you actually repeat the word uh, behind me because it will help you communicate signs better. It will help you also remember the spellings better. Okay, so the first one is phagocytosis. The second one is autophagy. And the third one is programmed cell destruction. Programmed cell destruction. Now let me explain each one to you and so you understand the functions of <coughs> of the lysosomes. So phagocytosis is cellular eating. So you'll notice here that the lysosome, the lysosome over here is going to bind to a food vacuole. The food and if you have food from coming from outside the cell, it forms a vacuole. This food vacuole now you have vacuoles full of food and the food needs to be broken down. Who's going to break down the food vacuole? It's the lysosome. So as you can see over here, the lysosome is going to bind to the food vacuole and start breaking the food particles. It's going to start breaking the food vacuoles, and that is called digestion. And help them. I mean, to help them. Okay? So that is phagocytosis, which is cellular eating. This is how the cell eats. The food comes inside. As a, in the form of food vacuole, the food vacuole will bind to the lysosome, and the lysosome is going to digest the food in the food vacuole. So that is the first function of the lysosome. The second one is autophagy, and autophagy, autophagy means um, self-eating, okay, or self-destruction. So here. Uh, or breaking down uh, dead uh, dead organelles. So here, for example, you have a mitochondria, and that mitochondria halas has expired. It's dead. It's tired. It doesn't work anymore. So we don't need that mitochondria in the cell anymore. So that mitochondria has to be broken down, has to be digested, and had into me autophagy. So here you have the enzyme. Autophagy is the uh, destruction of unwanted. Um, uh, organelles in the cell. So as I said, the mitochondria uh, won't be wanted anymore because it's old or doesn't work anymore. So here comes the lysosome and the lysosome will now bind to the mitochondria and break it down. Break it down. Okay, so it's going to digest the unwanted organelles. So digestion of food is called phagocytosis. Digestion of food is called phagocytosis. And digestion of unwanted organelles is called auto. فاجي يعني automatically الخلية تتخلص من الأورجانز اللي ما تحتاجها. The third function 
of lysosome is programmed cell destruction, which I will talk about in more detail with the picture. So really quickly, I'll refresh your memory. Phagocytosis is cellular eating. So it's how the cell eats. Uh, by engulfing food particles or smaller organisms. Example, macrophages and amoebas. So for example, if you have an amoeba, uh, sorry, amoeba and the macrophages, they use the process of phagocytosis, which is swallowing the food. Okay, مثال على So how do they issue amoeba and macrophages? That's how they work, by phagocytosis. All right. Um, so what we have, and the, the lysosomes can also break down macrophages and amoebas if they get inside the cell, all right? Lysosomes contain active hydrolytic enzymes. So here you have the uh, lysosome, and the lysosome, we said, is full of enzymes that can break down material. So here you have the food vacuole coming inside, food vacuole, and then it binds to the lysosome, and it starts breaking down the food in the process of digestion, as I mentioned in the previous lecture. Okay, and that's how macrophages, uh, macrophages and amoeba also eat. So this is an amoeba over here. Should I find the amoeba? Had the amoeba? Okay, maybe I should use red. So this is an amoeba cell, and it's trying to eat this bacteria. Bacterium. طبعا لما يكون واحدا نسمي bacterium. Well, plural مال bacterium, bacteria. So bacteria means many. Bacterium is a single one. So you can see that the amoeba is eating or engulfing the bacterium using phagocytosis. So phagocytosis is a term used for swallowing food. Okay, and here you have a macrophage, okay, which is trying to eat the bacteria as well. Add a macrophage, Okay, what is it doing? It's trying to eat the bacteria. The process is also called phagocytosis. So examples of phagocytosis is lysosomes, they do phagocytosis, amoeba also do phagocytosis, and macrophages also do phagocytosis. The second job we said, or the function, is autophagy, right? Which is automatically getting rid of organelles that are no longer needed inside the cell. All right, so digestion of the cell's own organelles. Why would you want to destroy your own organelles? Well, if you don't need them anymore, then, then it's better to recycle it. So engulfing is damaged or old mitochondria. So we don't want damaged mitochondria in the cell. We don't want old mitochondria in the cell. So in, in order to get rid of the mitochondria, the cell will perform autophagy. autophagy. You have the lysosome here full of the enzymes. You can see the enzymes inside here. Uh, the, and this is a vesicle carrying the old or the damaged mitochondria. They fuse together. They fuse together, and then now the enzymes of the lysosome is going to break down our mitochondria in the digestion process. Actually, there's something cool over here is that the lysosome is actually now um, eating or damaging uh, or getting rid of two damaged organelles. Look at this picture. This is pretty cool. Yeah, how the lysosome is one lysosome. Look at this lysosome. This is one lysosome, and it's actually eating um, or destroying a mitochondrial fragment, and it's also uh, destroying a uh, peroxisome fragment. So the lysosome can actually even eat two or destroy two organelles at the same time. The third job, or the third function we, talk, we spoke about, is programmed cell destruction. So sometimes the body is prepared, and it has a program to destroying itself. مثل إيش؟ يا جماعة تعرفوا الطفل الجنين مش الطفل الجنين في بطن أمه uh, لما تشوفوا السكان ما تلاحظ إنه في جلد بين الأصابع. So the embryo when the embryo is developing inside the womb there is a piece of skin between the fingers of the developing embryo right? Where does that skin go when the baby is born? It's not there anymore. That's because the lysosomes have a programmed cell destruction. At a specific time, at a specific growth stage, the lysosomes are going to go, they are programmed to destroy those cells and get rid of them for the better good. This is another example of how the lysosome hydrolyzes specific cells in a lot of the multicellular organisms during the development and growth. So the embryo I told you, uh, the skin, 
which is a tissue between the hand fingers of the human of the embryos, they're destroyed during the development by these lysosomes. Another example is the uh, the frogs and the tadpoles. Yeah, when the frog is um, um, is is uh, being developed from the tadpole, so you can see over here. You see, this is the tail of the frog. It's a tadpole. It's not there anymore. When Rah, the lysosomes did programmed cell destruction and got rid of those tissues that are no more needed in the adult. So now, so far, we spoke about, to refresh your memory, we spoke about the Golgi body, and we finished talking about the lysosomes. The next thing I'm going to talk about is vacuoles. Remember, we spoke about vacuoles. We're going to talk about vacuoles and vesicles. Vacuoles are larger than vesicles. Let's look at the vacuoles, then let's talk about vesicles, and conclude with mitochondria and, um, and uh, chloroplast. Vacuoles, what are they? These are membranous sacs larger than transport vesicles. So the transport vesicles are smaller. Vacuoles are larger. Okay, method ish examples, we have food vacuoles. Food vacuoles are vacuoles that are full of food. Uh, and we get them through phagocytosis, which is cellular eating, uh, when they fuse with the lysosomes. Another example of a vacuole is a contractile vacuole. When is the word in the lab, in the protista? Where did we hear this contractile vacuole? We find it in some protista, like the uh, paramecium, if you remember, that it has a contractile vacuole right there. Why? Because it pumps out excess water. Okay, these are found in freshwater protista like paramecium. And what do these vacuoles do? They pump, <coughs> they pump excess water out of the cell. We spoke about this in a lot of detail in the lab. Another example of vacuole is the central vacuole. The central vacuole I spoke to you about in the previous lecture, and I said don't worry about it because I'll tell you all about it in the next lecture. So here we are back talking about the central vacuole, which is found right there. Remember, central vacuoles are not found in animal cells. They're only found in plant cells. So you only find them in plant cells. And they actually occupy a large space of the plant cell. They are actually formed. Do you know how they're formed? The central vacuole, how is it formed? It's actually formed by, from small vacuoles that come together. So you have a vacuole coming out from the ER, and it's modified in the Golgi apparatus. Yeah, take a vacuole, kaba. And then comes another vacuole, it fuses with it. And then comes another vacuole, it fuses with it. Comes another vacuole, fuses. It's like the interaction لحد ما يسوي لك until it gives you the central vacuole. So that's how it's formed. They actually come by fusion, التصاق والتحام. Smaller vacuoles coming out of the ER and modified by the Golgi apparatus. That will give you eventually the central vacuole. central vacuum. Okay, so that's how it's made. Now, okay, what's the importance of the central vacuoles? What is it for? This is a one thing I want you to focus on. It's used to store proteins, store inorganic ions like potassium, like calcium. It stores pigments, it stores poisonous compounds. Why do you need poisonous compounds inside the plant? Well, to protect it against harbors. To, to uh, protect it against the animals that eat plants. Yeah, it's a defense mechanism. It's also uh, depositing metabolic byproducts. So if you have any waste material inside, you pull it out, and it has a major role in plant cell growth. So these are the functions of uh, the central vacuole. Okay, so far we spoke about, in today's lecture, we spoke about the Golgi body, then we spoke about uh, lysosomes, we spoke about vacuoles, vesicles, and now in the last few slides, the last five slides, we're going to talk about organelles that are not part of the endomembrane system. So now the things that we're going to talk about for the rest, which is the mitochondria and the chloroplast, these are not part of the endomembrane system. Okay, these are not part of the endomembrane system. Mitochondria and chloroplast. Let's talk about them.
them. They're important, but remember, they're not part of the endomembrane system. Let's talk about the features that are common. What are the things that are common between the two, between mitochondria and chloroplasts? Well, these are organelles that convert energy into forms that we can use for work. Both of them are used for release of energy, one in the plants and one in the animals. But remember, they are not part of the endomembrane system. They have small quantities of their own DNA. Okay? كل واحد فيهم يحمل كمية بسيطة من DNA ماله and ribosomes. Okay, so they're kind of, kind of semi-autonomous. يعني they can kind of be independent because they have a little bit of their own ribosomes and their own DNA. So we call these semi-autonomous organelles. شبه مستقل. شبه مستقل. Okay, so mitochondria grow and reproduce as semi or semi-autonomous organelles. They reproduce and they grow independently of the cell. كيف يقدر grow and and reproduce in uh, independently والله لأنه عنده its own DNA and ribosomes. Let's talk about the mitochondria and then the chloroplast. The mitochondria, as you all know, مركز تحرير الطاقة. Okay, it is the a site for cellular respiration. And what do we mean by cellular respiration? It's the process, catabolic process, which means it breaks down material to release energy. So it's a catabolic process that generates ATP, which is energy, طاقة. So it generates ATP by oxidation of sugars, lipids, and other fuels with the help of oxygen. So cellular respiration is making or releasing energy from food in the form of sugar, lipid, or other fuel in the presence of oxygen. And we have a number of mitochondria in a cell which is correlated to the metabolic activity. The higher the number of mitochondria in the cell means that cell is very active and requires a lot of energy. So if you have a cell that is very active, it needs more mitochondria than a cell that is not very active. Okay, and this is the structure of the mitochondria. I want you to have a look here. You have, it's a double membrane. Here you have the outer membrane. Outer membrane, and then you have an inner membrane, which is this one over here. Lahabu inner membrane is kasfat. It's folded, 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 folded. Why? It's very important that it's folded. Mada erafakat. Remember, we spoke last lecture about surface area. So if these are folded, it means it has a higher surface area. And why do we want a higher surface area? Well, because we want more activity and more energy. Okay, and here you have three ribosomes in the mitochondrial matrix. So I think in a, in a in a كلها داخل يصبح فيها ribosomes. All right, and it has the genetic material. The chloroplast is only found in plants. Okay, algae and other photosynthetic protista. So anything that performs photosynthesis has the chloroplast. لأنها مركز تحليل الطاقة في النباتات بعملية البناء الضوئي. Photosynthesis. Okay, what is photosynthesis, dear Jamaa? What's photosynthesis? It is the process of transforming light into chemical energy in the form of sugar. And you all know chloroplasts are green, and that's where, because they're full of thylakoids, yeah? And you can see the ribosomes here. Shaifin? That's ribosome here, ribosome here, and that's the chloroplast DNA here, or DNA here. I should give you a chloroplast and mitochondria, they're semi-autonomous. They can grow and reproduce by themselves. They have ribosomes, they have DNA, so they are semi-autonomous. They are what? Semi-autonomous organelles that are not part of the endomembrane system. Please remember that. All right, at the end, there is this... Um, Fun fact, as I said, fun facts, you are not assessed on them. They're just things that make you smile, things that give you extra information, uh, kind of a chiller, all right? So you have a YouTube link here that you can uh, watch um, at your free time. Uh, alternatively, you can just go online. And this is just giving you some fun facts about mitochondria. Uh, alternatively, you can just go online on YouTube and search for whatever uh, caught your attention in today's lecture. So you I advise you to have like a piece of paper and notes and you say, mm, I want to learn more about lysosomes. I want to learn more online. Okay, so by the end of this lecture, if there's any part that you still don't understand fully or you simply want to know more, just go up on YouTube and please don't hesitate to Google. This is the proper learning in the 21st century. I want you to be independent. You are very smart students. 
you know how to get things done and this is the best time for us to challenge ourselves خذوا هذا الكوفيد 19 كتحدي لانفسكم ادخلوا اونلاين تعلموا بروحكم انا نفسي جس احاول استخدم هذا الوقت او هذه المحنه واحولها الى فرصه بامانه انا سجلت كورسات في في جامعه هارفارد مجانيه اوكي لاني انا اريد اطور من معلوماتي ومن المهارات اللي انا عندي اياها اوكي الانسان اذا ما يطور من نفسه وما يتعلم يعتبر ميت So please, uh, my dear students, use this opportunity as a challenge and say, you know what, I'm going to come out stronger and smarter and better from this situation. And trust me, you are stronger and smarter than you think you are. So all the best. And if you have any questions, again, don't hesitate to contact.